Hey tubers, so what's going on? It has been a while since I've done a real video because there hasn't been much to do. Been working a lot. Tried to keep up the old socials and the live feeds because I still like doing the live feeds. They're very quick and easy for me to do and I get to interact with these guys really easily. So what have I been up to? The poster's still broken. Cell 3 took a big nosedive. Uh, it is full of Sanyos. This is one of the more recent builds that I did, as you can tell by the, the, the new bus bars. Now, I've got to take these bus bars off, but I thought I'd chuck, before I took the bus bars off, I thought I'd recharge it up to fully charged again, so I could actually test for self-discharge. I'm going to retest all the cells in this pack just for fun. I have got another cell here. Ah. So this one should be slightly better, I hope. I've already... Um, like tinned it all up ready for the bus bar to go on and change that over and it is cell 3 so cell 3 failed I've also got cell 54 and 55 I think are really low and need replacing as well one more thing uh, we are doing another couple of tests on cell 5 so cell 5 is still having a long and fruitful life a lot longer than I thought now I've been testing these units from Batrium now unfortunately a lot of the data that I've been getting out of them has been it worked or it didn't work. This one here, the actual screen has gone out and this is apparently the 20 amp one and this one here is the 25 amp one with the sexy fans on it so when I give it some juice the fans come on. So I'm doing one last test that is now at 4.17 volts. Now these little units do have a few little glitchy problems and one, oh wait a minute, we'll just have to move that. One is they're not very accurate on the voltage. And two, they don't cut off at the bottom. Well, I haven't been able to work out how to get them to cut off at the bottom. The, the, the instructions are fairly vague. Uh, so it's something you have to actually watch and manage. But for the price of the units, which was 30 or 40 bucks or something, they are a very easy way of testing the packs. Now, if you have a look here, at one of the last videos that I tried doing, which I didn't really release, if you want to have a look at it, I'll link it below. Um, it's by no means finished video. Um, I did a whole heap of tests and tried to record everything, and it was just a mess. But these cells here, I did a test with two running, and it just got hot. It was like 50, 60 degrees, uh, which is not very good at all, when considering I was only drawing about 50 amps out of the battery. Uh, it took about two and a half hours, I think, to run that test. So I'm going to run one more test now. I've got the little SJ camera that has been provided by Gearbest. Um, and it is a handy little unit to have around, the little SJ camera. So if we, all that we've got to do to start this test is press record on this little camera. Wait for it to come up. Recording. Of course you can't see it because of the focus. Turn these knobs. Right, and we get some rather bright light and there we go pulling 29.2 amps so maybe that's actually pulling better amps because I uh, I doubled up all the cables so we got the cables coming in this end as well so I got two going to this end on either side where is it there we go and then another two cables coming down here uh, to the other end of the the cell to try and distribute the load a little bit so and they're just soldered directly to the bus bars. So we'll just let that run and I'll give you the results later on that one. There we go, another one's done. I forgot how tedious this process was. Long monitors attached, cables on, all soldered up, ready to go into service. As I was starting to put this all together, um, that one's just touching and that one's disconnected. I looked over on the computer screen and noticed we've got a huge difference. So I've gone up and set up a screen record of this. When I connect it all back up, it's gonna automatically take power from here to here. But I'm gonna see if I can hit the clamp meter up at the same time. Radio. We've got the top hook back up again. The bottom I've got loose for now. We'll turn the, the light on there. All right, let's join this up. All right, we'll release it again. We just did it for a short time. And it's doing 90 or 89.1 amps balance charging, which is not going to hurt this pack one bit. So we know the amps it's doing now, so we know it's not going to hurt it. Pop that off there. Done. 
we're back on. Have a look in the power shed. And those cells have come way up high, real, real fast. We're going to have a bit of a balancing issue with the cell three there, but the long one will deal with that, no worries at all. Okay, it's about been about six minutes, and it's dropped down to 71 amps. So the initial the initial was almost 80, so it's slowly dropping down as it balances out, which is pretty neat to see. Definitely the favourite tool of the month. And that's dropping down. And of course that'll continue to drop down until she's balanced out, and then the voltage will come back up again, and I'll be back up to four packs rather than three. As you'd expect, there's no heat in those packs at all. Beautiful. Right now, tubers. So I th just thought I was all done here, uh, but unfortunately, I thought it'd make a good part of a video if I got my third ca FLIR camera out and um, had a look around. If you look up here, we have got 74 degrees on that joint. Let's have a look at the other ones. And the other one's coming in at 50 degrees. So this one's 20 degrees hotter. It's this one just up here. Um, the only reason I realized it is because I went and checked every time I do something with my um, my power wall. I do it, I do it. As you'd expect, there's no heat in those packs at all. A touch test, so I go around and touch everything. But I tell you what, I got a shock when I hit that. So this one's high tech and it's saying uh, 72 degrees at its hottest. Any at the hottest part. So I don't know. I don't know how accurate they are between the two. Um, that's saying uh, oh, 60, oh, 57, sorry. Reading it back to front on the little screen. My feeling is when I crimped it, that this crimp is just not good enough on the negative side. Um, now I have had that problem before, but I thought I got them all. And with the amps passing through it, obviously at the moment, it's causing an issue. So it must be dealt with. All right, I just got up to the workshop from the battery shed. Now that is saying 1.8 volts and it's still doing 20 amps discharge and it's saying 194 and there's 60 so it's about 140 amp hours it took out of it again which is a fantastic news that means uh, that's five whole tests it's come within five percent of 140 amp hours uh, that one there is saying it is two volts and that's 1.87 so we still got the discrepancy there we get the thermal camera out uh, press record. Now there is some heat in this pack now, as you can see. Looks like we got a cell there that's 58 degrees Celsius. So if I had to have a quick look, uh, 58 degrees Celsius. So where's my finger? That blue cell, holy, yep. Okay, so that blue cell there is the one that's hot and it's really hot. Let's just snip that cable and the fuse is still intact. So there we go, we found the problem with that and we'll, we'll investigate that further. And of course I did test that entire pack for heaters. So, don't know what's going on there. And then we'll turn that one down. Of course, that the fan will stay on there until it's actually got all the heat out of it. And the voltage is jumped back up again to 2.2 and 2.3 there. So there we go, tubers. I guess that's an update. I hope you enjoyed. If you like it, do that thumbs thing, because it really helps. Um, I'll try and start doing some more regular videos. If you've got any video ideas, please leave them below. We've got to concentrate on what I do, some power wall stuff, and still got to fix the television. Anyway, tubers, thank you very much for tuning in, and I will see you on the next one.